What's up everyone, Willie Apple here. Today, Apple has released the first beta of iOS 18 to developers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. If you'd like to get iOS 18, you can watch my video right there. And the first thing you can see right here is that we have redesigned home screen app icons. Well, it's not like this by default. If we go into the edit and then customize button, you're gonna see we have a brand new look. So this is what it looks like right now and what it looks everyone. And we can even tint our own app icons. So I can make it red, all of them red if I wanted to. And to show you what it looks like with other apps, including third party apps, here's what it looks like right now. It doesn't look really good yet, but uh, developers will need to update their apps in order to, with the new icons, in order to have them look good on iOS 18. So that is why they look a little bit bad right now. And we even have a dark mode and then we have automatic mode. So this switches between light and dark mode. And you can even set your wallpaper from a light to a darker one. So we'll make your wallpaper darker. Let me unblur the wallpaper real fast. All right, so here's a lock screen right now. And then if we go into here, you can see it darkens it. So that's a lot better, especially on dark mode. It looks extremely nice. And we even have a brand new default behavior in iOS 18 with the light mode. This is what it is by default, but you have to manually change your widgets to go into dark mode. We even have large sizes for the app icons. So you don't need to see the name. It will just take up as much space as it can, which looks extremely nice. It even has a really nice animation to it as well. Not every app is going to look like the dark mode icon. So you'll need to wait and see if the app automatically updates to iOS 18 SDK. Now the next thing has to do with widgets. So you can now manually resize widgets just by dragging it like this and you can make them smaller or even the small size. Just like this, it's a lot easier. Here's an example with a widget that supports all the sizes. And then you can see right here, if we switch it to the medium size for Willy widgets, you can see it still works even though my app is not built for the latest SDK. All right, the next thing that we got is the new Passwords app. So you can see right here, Passwords is locked via your passcode or face ID. And it's a lot easier to get to your passwords now. So as you can see right here, I could view all my passwords. I could view the passwords that require verification codes. I could view passwords that I need to change because of a security alert and view passwords that have a passkey. I could view all my passkeys or all my Wi-Fi passwords as well. So Apple has put them all in one place. You can even easily share passwords now and it's a lot easier. Going to lock screen, we got a couple brand new features inside of here. You might notice already at the translate app icon. I'm not gonna keep it there, I'm just playing with it. But you can see right here, we're able to remove them entirely. We're also able to add any one that we want. So if I wanted dark mode right there, for example, even though I don't, and let's just do a random one, airplane mode. You can have airplane mode right here. You could add any one of these toggles and developers will be able to use a third party API to get their actions in here. So just to show you that they work, I'm gonna add find my watch in here. And then when I press and hold it, Okay, it's supposed to do it, but I guess it's not doing it. I guess iOS 18 is just a little bit buggy right now. But any control center icon is down here as well right now. And speaking of the control center, it has gotten completely overhauled. So it's separated by pages now. So you have all your music right here, all your home actions right here, and all your connectivities right here. And just to show you, the connectivities also goes like that. And it's a lot easier to get to everything now. So you can easily turn off your airdrop or turn it on. And you can even rearrange it. As you can see right here, I've rearranged the icons quite a bit and you can even resize them just like you can with widgets. And it looks really nice when resizing them. You can even rearrange them or remove a bunch if you want. And it is a little bit buggy here right now, but it is to be expected as it is a developer beta. As you can see, all of them are just bouncing around and not going where I want them to go. A lot of things are just really buggy right now in iOS 18, but they will all get better as Apple releases new betas. As you see, I want this volume indicator right here, but I just can't. So hopefully we get that fixed inside of iOS 18. You can even add all your controls from here. You no longer do it in settings. In fact, you can't even do it in settings. I'll show you the settings app in a bit but you can see all you got to do is just add a control and you no longer need to do it in settings and you can even turn off your phone from the control center as well but it does still make you slide to power off all right so the next thing has to do with a redesigned settings app but you can see the settings app is completely overhauled if we scroll down it just looks completely different we no longer have all the apps down here 
just all listed. We had them all in here and you could just look at all your apps it right in there. Control center doesn't really matter anymore. This should not be its own separate section, I think. So Apple should remove it in a bit. And you can see it's just been reordered quite a bit. Now this might be a little bit controversial, I could see it, but to be honest, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Probably because it's not a dedicated overhaul just like it was in Mac OS Ventura. But apparently these are actions sorted by priority. And we even have the Apple ID rebranded to Apple account. As you can see right there, it says Apple account instead of Apple ID. If we were to go in here, it might not look any different, but if we were to go into the iCloud settings, the iCloud settings has been completely overhauled. It looks a lot nicer. It even has a subscriber edition on top, which is pretty cool to see. And you can get to the old view just by going into storage right here. It is a little bit different, but it still is the old view. Now the next thing has to do with a summary feature. So if we are on a page, we press this turn on feature, it'll automatically summarize everything in here. It is a little bit buggy right now, but you can't really see it. I guess you can go into reader view from here now. And yeah, it's just very buggy right now. Hopefully Apple fixes it in a future beta, but you can get to all your actions right from this button down here. You just tap this and then the dots and all your things are still here. Now the next thing is in the messages app. You can see right here, I sent a message at 2.09 p.m. and it's gonna send at 7 p.m. So this is a really nice feature inside of iOS 18 and they've even cleaned this up a little bit. It's like the actions that you need now. And you could even put some on top, I think. Like if I want to put send later down here, you could just rearrange it yourself. It's not a big deal if they've put everything down. But also we got a couple brand new features. You can see right here, they've added any emoji into a reaction. So if I were to do a tap back, you could see all the emojis and even some of them have been redesigned right here. And you could choose any emoji once again or any sticker apparently. I'm gonna do a Craig Federighi one, cause why not? And you can see it looks a lot better as well as you can see right here. And also inside the messages app, we have rich communication services on the iPhone. So what that basically is, is that Android texting is now a lot better which is really nice to see. However, I have not gotten it to work quite yet, and I'm not sure if I will be able to. We'll see. It could have been that everyone who I've tried was an Android user does not have RCS enabled, but it's enabled by default on the iPhone. So texting Android users is gonna be a lot better. They're no longer gonna ruin the group chats. You're gonna have red receipts and reactions in, in a conversation for Android users. Also along in here in the Messages app, if you tap on this FaceTime icon, you could share your screen or ask to share your screen directly from the Messages app without needing to go to their profile card or anything. Now the next thing is inside of the Calculator app. So if I were to go to the Calculator app right here, you could see it looks a little bit different now. And in fact, if I were to rotate it, we do not have the Scientific Calculator anymore. That's intentional. I'm gonna show you how you can get the Scientific Calculator back. You just press this Calculator button and then press on scientific. And as you can see right here, it is now 100% scientific. You could choose any things right here. You don't even have to go into rotate mode to get into the scientific calculator, although you still can. You no longer need to go into here. Calculator app has just gone a lot smarter. You can even do conversions right here. So if I wanted to convert 69.25 United States dollars to 6.4 thousand euros, you can do that. Or you can even do energy, like I could do kilocalorie to uh, newton meter, for example. Just random things in here. It's just a lot easier to do conversions in, inside an iPhone and even have a calculator history, as you can see right here. And you can even swap everything. So you can measure the liters of that number or yeah, it's just a little bit complicated in here. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna use it. And this math notes feature is basically for taking notes. For example, if I were to scribble a couple of things in here, four plus four equals, it will automatically solve it for me. You can see right there, it says eight and I can even resize it. So it says eight just right there. It's just a really cool feature. It does it with AI. You can even do algebra expressions. Let me show you real fast. 8x plus 2x is equal to one. You can see it does its best to calculate it. And if I just tap on the X right here, it should, or I just need to do that, I think. And then it will just automatically calculate. I'm not sure how this works right now, but we'll eventually see how it does work as we get more used to it. And it's just really nice. It's integrated into the Notes app. 
but it's still the calculator app as you can see right here. All right, now the next thing is inside the calendar app. If I were to tap right here and let's say Mac OS video, I can make it say 4 p.m. and then I can even press add and I'm pretty sure you can make it a reminder somehow. I'm not really sure how you could do it, but I just know that is a feature. We'll eventually learn how that works, but as you can see, you can integrate it into the reminders app somehow. Now the next thing has to do with the journal app. You can see if I were to press on new entry, we automatically have, let me just do this real fast, you gotta allow it. And then you have the mental health feature, so you could make it say whatever you want, you can expand it. And it's just the mental health feature directly in here. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna say amaze, excited, happy. And then I'm gonna do hobbies, uh, money, work, I guess, because this is all about WWDC. And you even have titles in here. So you can make a WWDC was amazing. I loved WWDC so much. Now, now, speaking of the journal app, if I were to go to the edit widgets thing, you can see the journal app now has its own separate widgets. So we have a journal streaks, we also have journal entries, and we also have journal prompts. So this is some, what is something you are have grateful to have learned. You can press the next prompt, it's interactive. Learn about an activity that makes you feel good. It just generates new prompts for you. So if I were to press this, I could generate a new one with interactive widgets and I could press new and then it will automatically open the journal app and how you being kind with yourself would be the prompt for that. But I don't really use the journal app a whole lot. Now the next thing is that you can lock your apps. So if I wanted to lock study direct right here, all I have to do is press require face ID and then you could make it require face ID. Along with that, you can also hide it and require face ID. So I'm just gonna make it require face ID for now. Let me do this. I've been authenticated and now it should be locked whenever I go into here. Face ID required also lets you do it with your passcode. And then as you can see, I'm in the app as well. And if I were to go to the app library, you should be able to see a hidden part. So you could hide certain apps inside of the app library and it's just hidden in the app library. You already could hide apps with this by removing the app and removing it from the home screen. But now you can completely hide the app just by putting it in a hidden folder in the app library, which is a pretty cool feature to see. Now the next thing has to do with the phone app. So you can now record conversations a lot easier. And don't worry, you'll need iOS 18 in order to see if somebody's recording you. So just letting you know right there. Now the next thing has to do with a redesigned photos app. If I were to go into here and tap, you see it automatically shrinks, so you can still see the full image and you can even close it so you don't need to swipe anymore. You can easily delete, make some modifications or share with brand new toolbar buttons on the bottom. If I were to go into here, you could see that a lot of it, all the actions are in the, these three dots up here. It looks a lot nicer. Photos app layout has been changed a little bit. So you can sort by your years, months, or all, or you can even sort by whatever you want and filter things out. So if I wanted to remove all my screenshots and do that now, if we were to go down right here, you could see recent days and you have a lot more categories that I'm not going to show because it shows some private information down there. Now, next thing has to do with topographic maps. So if I were to zoom in right here and zoom in pretty far, select national park. I don't think this one works. I just know there's topographic maps now, but I'm not sure where which national parks are supported as of right now or mountains, who knows. I'm just unable to find them at the moment. So just letting you know right here that there are now topographic maps in select national parks and, and it doesn't have a bad design on like watchOS right here. Now next thing is a preview to, to a new version of Siri. So if I were to press and hold, you can see there's a brand new dot right here and it just comes in as I'm pressing it, as you can see right there. It's a pretty cool feature and you can see just by tapping these buttons, you can see it extends like that. It looks pretty cool actually. Now, should you update to iOS 18 on your main device right now? I would say hold off for a little bit. This is just the first developer beta, so Apple might not know of a couple of bugs. There are just a couple people there that have access to iOS 18, so we cannot know for sure that it is 100% smooth. But as for me, I would rank it a 6 out of 10. It's actually surprisingly pretty smooth, or maybe a 7 out of 10. But there are still a couple of visual issues. For example, if I were to go into here, sometimes this were to jitter a bit. I can't get it to reproduce right now, but it does jitter sometimes. And performance feels pretty snappy, actually, for a beta 1. And if you want to learn how to install it, still go right here. I would still do it on a second device or have an iCloud backup just in case. And keep in mind, stuff that was announced 
WWDC, like Apple Intelligence is not there yet. As you can see, we have still have the old Siri design. Apparently, we're supposed to get a new Siri design later in a future iOS 18 update. But we'll have to see and wait. I'll also be covering iPadOS 18 and macOS Sequoia in a couple of future videos. But yeah, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Download my apps, Willy Widgets, and StudyRec down in the description down below. And join the Discord server, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!